Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Kate Zeinard. I'm Amanda Carestio. And I'm Meg Healy. Today on the podcast, we're talking about fabric manipulation, and we have a very, very special guest host joining us for that, Bianca Springer of Thanks I Made Them. Welcome, Bianca. And before we get started, let's do a little check-in. How was our weekends? Anyone do anything fun? I Pretty can't good. Even remember. I know, I know. It's only Monday. <laughs> it's only Monday, guys. <laughs> We're in like final project of the summer mode over here, like things we wanted to do to get done this summer and we better go ahead and get them done like house projects. So oh. that that took up most of my weekend, that and a little bit of roller skating, which is my new quarantine hobby. Mm, nice. Oh, where are you roller skating? Everywhere. Just around the neighborhood? <laughs> neighborhood. Greenways, um, there's a nice little uh, paved uh, walkway around a lake really near my house. And um, yeah, I've I've definitely, I have some bruises, no, but, no. Um, but it is so much fun. It's been it, good exercise too. And are you on quads? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. I, you know, my sister's a derby girl and so or she used to be, she doesn't do it anymore, but um, you are making a face like you did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, well, my, my sister-in-law, technically. Um, and yeah, so she she did derby for years. And so I have a little bit of skating experience myself because we used to go up and skate with her. So oh, that's awesome. Love nice. skating. How about you, Bianca? What have you been up to in, you know, this weekend and all of kind of sewing, sewing quarantine, as we are, <laughs> we call it? I'm, I assume you've been doing lots of sewing. I know you've kept yourself very busy. Yes, I have. And last week and into last weekend, um, we did some family dyeing with batik wax. <gasps> oh, yes. fun. So it was really fun for everyone to get in the studio and make their own designs and to come up That's with their awesome. color combinations and um so this weekend I was removing the wax which is uh oh is that <laughs> not the fun part That's the, is that not the fun part it's not the fun part <laughs> why don't you get the family involved to do that part that, yeah good idea <laughs> you know some things you just have to be have one headache at a time and <laughs> I just yeah oh yeah. right eh? <laughs> yes so but oh, that that's was funny. really fun uh. Oh, oh, so fun. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, well, I'm feeling super refreshed. I just spent the weekend along. I took Friday off uh, and this morning, and I just got back um, from a cottage by the lake. We went boating, and I jumped in the lake every morning, and it was just so nice just to get out of the city and just unplug, and I just really needed it. And so now I'm back and feeling refreshed, but I got so many wears out of my— I wore, like, my— um. From the first capsule, my my Niagara skirt, I brought that as like my main cover up, and I it was so oh, perfect. perfect. Yeah, so I wore it all weekend, so that was always fun. You can wear something me made for sure. And now all I can think of is like new cottage outfits. <laughs> I'm just like, you mentioned that, <laughs> and I was like, that has to be a capsule. But I think I'm I on a to I'm on a, a capsule everything. I want a roller skating yeah. capsule. Yes. Meg, I want you to make a golf capsule. I want a golf cap. Like, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, not everything probably needs to be a capsule, but I want it yeah. to be. I know. Yeah, because we did actually go on the Friday. There was a golf course um, up north. We went to in Muskoka. It's a very nice area up in Ontario. And there was a golf course. We went golfing. And we did a mini putt before. And I got three holes in one what? at the mini putt. And it was, I think it's... I was using my new putter for my new club. Yeah, definitely a golf capsule. But yeah, so really, really great weekend I had. So ready to work now. I have so many things. I tried to avoid uh, making or even looking at my to-do list while I was up there. But now, you know, feeling like I can tackle it for sure. All right. Should we well, jump sh into it? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm, I'm super excited to have you here, Bianca. We have featured um, Bianca's creations very heavily in So oh, News. No creative machine embroidery, and our capsule studio collections. And Bianca, I love working with you because you always bring something new and different 
um, with your projects, and especially um, when it comes to fabric manipulation. Um, I think we've featured projects from you that um, feature flower resist, stenciling waxed canvas, DIY screen printing with an embroidery hoop. And I actually just got to open your painted leather samples um, <gasps> for an upcoming issue of So News, and they are so good. Um, and you are so creative. So I'm really excited to um, pick your brain and talk through some fabric manipulation ideas. Um, Cause I also feel like this is the type, the time in the summer when I'm kind of ready for this kind of stuff. I've been making and making and making summer clothes. And now I want to do something that feels special and different and maybe is a little bit more messy, maybe involves the family. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Cause you can do it outside, right? Yeah. Exactly. Things messy. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So let's, I, we, I have a couple questions for you specifically, Bianca, and I'm hoping we can, kind of all way in. Um, so let's jump in. Um, and this is kind of a question for everybody. What are some of your favorite techniques you've tried or want to try? And also, what is the craziest printing technique you've attempted? Okay, I'll go first. Kick us <laughs> off. Um, okay. Uh, in terms of favorite <laughs> techniques to try... I like a project that has clear rules with expected yet unpredictable results. So Ooh. if you say, here's the framework in which this thing should happen, but the end result may not be the same every time, like ice dyeing or um, marble painting, shibori dyes, things like that, where just you switch something up within the process and your result is different. I get really excited about those. Um, Cause you know, the preparation is fun, but then there's this wonderful anticipation as the process is working itself out. And then there's the awesome thrill with the final reveal. Mm. I feel like that's, I mean, I, yeah, I think that's common with, with fabric manipulation projects is you kind of have to let go and let, the process kind of like you can't have a specific result to, you know, you can't be too married to it. You kind of have to let go and let the fabric do its thing, which I think can be really surprising, but also frustrating for if you if you wanted something different. Um, but I yeah. think it's, it's just a different kind of it's a different mode of working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And different fabrics can totally I could see. You know, if the instruct, if yeah, the you know laid out, you know this step, this step is for you know a fabric. You just never know like what kind of what reactions things can have to it. And so yeah, that's totally fun. You're like, I don't know what this will exactly turn out, but yeah, I love that too. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the. Uh, okay, so I I know the basics of what I'm doing, but I don't know what the final result's going to be, and. Uh, I don't know that I do it that much with fabric, but uh, back when I was soaping a lot, um, the soap would often do stuff like that, where you're like, I'm going to do a swirl inside this loaf of soap, and I'm going to have no idea what it looks like until I cut it in three days. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always find there's that moment, too, like, it's, there's always the moment, uh, when we do, like, uh, I haven't done a lot with fabric manipulation, so I'm so excited to learn more about it, but just, mm -hmm. like, DIY, Julian and I, my husband, we do some DIY projects around the house, and there's the point in it, you go, this isn't going to work. There's always the point. Oh, you go, every project This is made. not going to work. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> this is, uh, why did I even think I could do this, you know? <laughs> oh, but then it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I enjoy that bit of uncertainty in the Yeah, middle. yeah. Oh, I can see that. I have I have a hard time with it sometimes. I feel like I don't know. I love the idea of fabric manipula manipulation and I have a lot of um, techniques that I want to try, but I do have a hard time letting go. I mean, even mm -hmm. just dyeing things like I get a lot of thrifted fabric and, um, you know, I've definitely like dyed something that was synthetic with the wrong kind of dye so it didn't necessarily work the way I wanted it to and um you know the base color can really impact what you end up with um and I always forget to take that into account so um mm -hmm. I think it I think it'd be good for me to to practice that more though just kind of 
letting go and let it become what it's going to become. Because I think that's kind of the fun and the magic part of it. Right. There's something really special about doing something where you know that no matter how many times you repeat exactly what you've done, you are not going to get the same result. Never. Yeah. And it's I think one of a kind. Yeah. yeah. I think there's something very cool about that. All right, Bianca, do you have a craziest printing technique that you've tried other than printing and, and dying with your kids? Because that sounds pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty crazy. Um, I would have to say the flower resist during Harvey. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. uh, that, I mean, I, I, I signed up for a sewing challenge mm-hmm. and they sent me some muslin right before the rain started for Harvey. And I told them, I'm like, the storm is coming to Houston. I don't know what it's going to do. I may participate. I may drop out. We'll see. And they pretty much said, hey, whatever you want to do, if you want to stick with it, great. And we were in the house, four people (laughs) anxiously (laughs) watching the storm go from, you know, what we normally see is rain to this flood scenario. Hmm. And it was so nerve wracking and anxiety producing for all of us. And I just looked around the house and I'm like, okay, I have this fabric and I have a pantry. Let me figure out what to do to get some of this energy out Mm -hmm. and painting the fabric with flour and then letting it dry overnight and then cracking it and I'd never done anything like this before. And I was like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I need to move my hands. And I got my kids involved. They're painting the muslin. And when it dried, we all just, you know, just to break something Mm -hmm. (laughs) is very therapeutic. And so to hear the flower crack on the fabric was satisfying. And then there was a break in the rain one day. And so we just took it all outside. I mean, everything was drying in my garage at the time. And so there was a break in the rain and we painted all over this fabric again. No clue what the result would be. Um, I was intentional with the colors. I have tons of fabric paint on hand. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was intentional with my color choices, but again, no clue what the result would be. Wow. And once we washed it away and I saw it, it was such a clear metaphor for the storm and the you know once I made the dress with piping for structure like it became a whole storytelling Mm. for me and and so that whole experience was crazy and um so it was very cathartic and I submitted the photographs and I won that round of the challenge and so that was pretty awesome Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but I think just you know, anytime I pour my psychology into a piece, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's like art. It's just, this yeah. is crazy. Oh, totally. It is. It is. Like being an artist, um, like just, and, yeah, amazing. Yes. Yeah, so that I think was the craziest given everything that was going on. And, um, and like I said, I won that round of the challenge. So that was very satisfying. And I think after that, I had my first contact with you, Amanda, um, oh, yeah. for So New. So that yes, was no, awesome. I think um, that that was the exact moment when I started following you on Instagram. And I was, that was just, it was a really moving project um, and a really just moving to hear about your process uh, for it as well. And I think that that kind of gets into my next question too is, um, you know, I think that fabric manipulation can really be a way to bring more meaning into your projects. Um, would you say that that the um, flower resist project that you made, is that kind of your on the list of your more meaningful fabric manipulation projects or do you have some others up there? Um, that's in the top 10, but it's not my number one. Um, my number one would have to be the fabric I printed for my daughter after oh, someone yeah. teased her about her hair. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, she was on the playground and she has gorgeous hair. She is the sweetest little girl. <laughs> and mm-hmm. someone told her her hair looked weird when it was loose and had all these beautiful curls. And she was so excited to go out and play that day. 
Okay, and she came in and I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, so-and-so said my hair was weird. And she was upset and we talked about it and we we have books about, you know, just the fact that we're beautiful and we're awesome people. And she went and she read her books and she was, you know, we had a good discussion about it. So I felt like, um, you know, as a parent, I felt like she was emotionally okay. Like she had, it wasn't, you know, we'd process mm-hmm. it. But I felt like I wanted to do more. I wanted, I felt like part of the issue wasn't that her friend was being mean. Um, Part of it was, why did that kid think Mm. something that is so natural and everyday is a weird thing? What Mm -hmm. is their exposure? And Mm -hmm. I decided to, you know, I'm like, I want to find some cute Afro puff fabric for her. And I went to the websites and I found nothing nothing that I didn't have to color in nothing that I didn't you know uh, right. all of the representations of kids the majority of them were white and mm. blonde ringlets and I'm like this is not us yeah. and I am tired of coloring in skin tones so mm. I um didn't know where to start but I in the end I made a stencil of a little girl with afro puffs and I printed that on fabric for her on this pink glitter fabric and then I made her a dress and that dress she if she could wear that that very dress today (laughs) as a (laughs) tunic she would she loved it so much (laughs) and and she I mean she took her um school pictures in it with her big afro puffs in the photo and just the fact that I you know she watched me not only say, you are beautiful, your hair is awesome, the mm-hmm. world's going to see this, and here's how I'm going to do it. And she was with me throughout all of that. And then she wears her dress and her hair to the mall. And she's getting stopped. And she's getting complimented. And people oh, are just smiling yes. at her. And kids are, you know, who probably would have thought it was weird, now see it completely normalized on her. Um, and so just... You know, teaching her, teaching her and my son to turn a negative into a positive. And sometimes you have to own the ugliness that people throw at you and project it back to them in a way that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so that one, I think, is right up there. She, you know, she will, we still have the stencil and Mm -hmm. I've made other similar designs since then. Um, and she loves them. She embraces them. Um, she will shake her hair, take her ponytails out. If <laughs> someone acts crazy around her, she'll fluff her hair. She just loves it. Yes. And so, you know, just, and so now, even all these years later, what she has taken away from that experience has less to do about what that kid said and more about how we then flipped it. And so that's mm. meaningful to me. Dang, that's a I'll wonderful say, story. I know totally. that is a, such a sweet story. I feel oh, like I that, that so it hits on all the levels, like making, being a mom, creating meaning. Yeah, all pink glitter. Yeah, pink I was. Yeah, yeah, I can just picture the dress, and it just looks <laughs> the so cutest cute. thing. The pink glitter. Oh, well, yes, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Bianca, are you doing a similar series with your pattern weights that you make? Yes, I have. Um, so I have my design, the, the Afro Diva girl. Um, but I've been a little hesitant to put her on pattern weights. Only yeah. because mm. that's my daughter's design. That makes sense, for yeah. sure. You know, and that's, so that's really personal. Um, but I had some customers submit other designers work for their pattern weights. And so they're really adorable um, Afro Divas with bubblegum. Mm -hmm. Um, and sunglasses and they're really cute Um, and what I like about these designs is that I can manipulate the skin tone in my software Mm -hmm. so the original design had a very dark skinned African American blowing a bubble Um, but my customer had fairer uh, skin and she's uh, she's like I want her to have my skin tone I said find me the Pantone color and I will match it and it was really cool for me to send her the proofs with multiple ranges of skin. And she's like, this is what I want. This is me. And so that's been really that's fun awesome. to see 
adults. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So That's I want yes, I want this bubblegum diva on yeah. my sewing table. Oh, so man. that's been good. I love your pattern weights. Like I, for the longest time, had really boring little store-bought poof things that always go missing because my kids always steal them, steal them and I find them in other areas of the house. But <laughs> I love your pattern weights. Um, I think I've, I've got the um, Sashiko set and it is so terrific. I have exactly Thank four you. pattern weights in my sewing studio and they are yours. So, here I am here still using pins. I need to step up my pattern <laughs> weight game. Yes, you do. <laughs> you do. Yes, you do. Where have I'm you been, been, Meg? I know. Mm-hmm. Right after this, I'm looking at your pattern weights. Yeah. <laughs> pin girl over here. <laughs> need to yes. upgrade. Pins. Oh, how pesky. Yeah. I know. How pesky. The occasional, <laughs> like, <laughs> occasional vegetable, you know, from in the oh, kitchen. Oh, yeah. Occasional, occasionally some cans. Or yes, exactly. Mugs or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But... Well, cool. Let's talk a little bit about space and setup. Um, Bianca, do you have a specific setup that you um, kind of keep up for when you are doing fabric manipulation projects? Um, And also, do you have tools and supplies that you kind of keep on hand um, for when a project idea pops into your head? Yes and yes. Um, I didn't always have have a um a space i had a guest room that i used as a studio and then um i had a our, our what's it, a formal dining room um that we never used because we got two young kids and who's doing mm-hmm. all of that yes. um, <laughs> <laughs> so that then became um my classroom for when i teach students um, but I was I was running between the two spaces because I love to thrift and I love estate sale shopping. So if I bought a large um, estate and had their uh, fabric manipulation supplies or their paints and stuff, I had nowhere for it. And so this year I converted my garage, my two car garage, into a sewing studio. Um, it has you know enough space for my paints, for my airbrush, for my uh, wax pot. Um, I used to uh, do jewelry metal smithing, so I still have those supplies what? and tools on hand. <laughs> yes. What, can, um, what can't you do? That's Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sit still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> Yes. So, um, so in terms of storage, um, I have the space now, um, for the painting and the wax projects. I take a lot of that outside. I have a big backyard and a patio. So I have folding tables I can just, um, and work outside. Um, mainly because my husband, I love him so, but he, he freaks out so much. He's like, there's paint. I don't want any paint on the floor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we did the batiking in my studio and I thought he would have a coronary. Um, but, <laughs> but so, yeah, I try to be considerate of, um, you know, his concerns about spills and damage and stuff. But so, yes, I, I have I use outside space. You don't need a lot of space for painting or batik. Mm-hmm. You just need a place that is you know, relatively protected. So if you have tarps and you go outside, you can throw paint around, you can do your indigo dye vat on grass. Um, You don't necessarily need to convert anything. You just need to have, you know, a decent amount of workroom in order to, you know, still have some impact in your work. Maybe that's my problem and I need to convert my garage. I don't know how my, I don't know how my husband will feel about that. (laughs) But but I feel like space comes up a lot when I think about those, you know, just working with like larger pieces of fabric and on a larger scale. Um, Mm -hmm. But there's really there's really no excuse. Summertime's perfect for this kind of stuff. Just I need to just set up on the backyard. Uh Mm -hmm. Yeah. Folding tables are, you know, super cheap and they just pop right back down and you don't need them. That's what six feet of space. That's that's good yardage. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're so right. Um, my next question, which I feel like 
comes up for me quite a bit is I feel like Instagram is so focused on kind of next project and production mode and whatever next thing you're going to hop into making. And I, um, I feel like, you know, it's, it's just part of the platform itself and the format, I think. Um, but how do you, how do you go about making time for experimentation, which is, mm. I definitely see fabric manipulation in that vein. Um, cause it takes time. And so how do you, how do you make time to dabble? I make time to dabble by making it a family thing. Oh. Um, I find that my, at the end of the day, my people want to spend time with me mm-hmm. and I want to spend time with them too, but I also want to create. I also want to dabble. I want to just throw things in the air and see where they fall. <laughs> and I think by bringing them in, my kids are 11 and eight and my husband is not necessarily creative, but he's willing And Mm. I think it's important for me to say, hey, guys, this is what I'm thinking of doing. I want to see your creative take on it. I want to involve you in this. There are no rules. And the fact that it's an experiment takes a lot of pressure off to be perfect or Mm -hmm. for everything to line up. And so it becomes really fun. Um, And I think for them... You know, it's, if I close the door and I work without them, there's all this intrigue and question and potentially exclusion involved. Mm-hmm. And I don't want that. I'm like, hey, come on in. Look what I'm doing. And if they think it's utterly boring, they're free to leave. <laughs> and <laughs> they, don't <hold> me. <laughs> they don't hold me to, you know, mom's not with me. She's not spending time with me. They understand, hey, that's just not my thing. And if the next thing is my thing, I know I can be in there with her. Um, and so I think involving them, um, allowing them their creative freedom is important. And then giving them the option to opt out once they try. And, um, you know, once the experiment is done and I want to delve more specifically into something, I can say, hey, guys, here's what I need to now do. And they are free you know, I, they're, very, I, they're very compassionate kids, you know, and very considerate. Mm-hmm. And if I say, you know, now that we've played, mama's got to work, they mm-hmm. understand that. Mm-hmm. And they know that next time I want to play, I'll bring them in. Um, but I think like with the batik we just did, each person had different tools they wanted to use, different colors for their fabrics, different techniques. And by crafting with them, they broadened my perspective. Mm. I My daughter did some stuff with the wax, and I'm watching her thinking, wow, this is going to be gorgeous. And <laughs> sure enough, I took her her, her swatch out of the, the um, dye vat, and I'm like, man, I want this. Man, I need six yards of this. <laughs> and <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think creating with them, you know, encourages my – creative expression as well um and yeah I think you know I think part of the the problem in making time for crafts is you feel like you have to do it alone but once you adjust your thinking to doing it with someone else and making a a joint effort I think it becomes more than it would be on its own yeah, totally. I, I love that. It's just for me, it's so funny. Like, so my husband and I, he's actually an artist. He went to art school and we have a big open studio loft and he's always curious about what I'm doing and I try and get him involved. And then me being a perfectionist, he messes up and I said, you can't help me anymore. <laughs> I tried to get him on the serger and he was like, he did some stuff. Okay. But bringing two, surging two pieces together, it kept bubbling. And I said, sorry, honey, you can't help me anymore. And he got up but that's okay. <laughs> For, but if I say, like, I think if I frame it, yeah, like experimentation time, I think that could be super cool. He actually, um, we have this big uh, bolts of, of white spandex and he just got an airbrush machine and he airbrushed, he projected Fun. a picture from um, me and my, uh, me at the wedding in our, in my wedding dress. And he airbrushed like a picture of me on our wedding day. And that was so sweet. Uh, and so I, I was like, oh, I should make that into something. But yeah, it's so nice to definitely 
get them involved and see them, uh, yeah, do stuff for themselves too. And how you kind of rub off, like I, being two different artists, you can kind of see how influence, you know, his art has influenced some like in, in different shape. He does like wood cut out pieces. It's in, influenced something I do. So it's, that's really cool how you can see, yeah, in your kids, like the, how they're so interested and influenced. And that's so cool. I love mm-hmm. that. <laughs> my my husband's the experimenter in my family. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I I tend to be more of the I want to have control over this and know exactly how it's going to turn out sort of thing. <laughs> um, but he, you know, he'll mess around with anything. He bought a forge over the weekend. Wow. I just remember that's what happened over the weekend. What my is husband, that? Yeah, that's forge. <laughs> that sounds pretty oh, is experimental. That the fire? Is that the yes. fire thingy? Yes. Oh, it's like okay. it's like a tiny, it's like a tiny, like two feet by one foot oven. Oh, um, okay. That gets really, really hot and you can melt metal in it. So Oh yeah, because we'll we we sometimes wow. watch the Forge and Fire, that TV show. Is that that's what they like the they make like weapons and like knives and stuff? I'm I'm not is familiar that, with that, but yes, that's probably the same show. thing. <sighs> yeah. So he, he doesn't even know what he's going to do with it. It was just a good deal. So he bought it. And I'm like, okay, awesome. well, cool. I guess we're going to find out. Hopefully far away from the cats. Mm. Exactly. Oh, you know, I loved, I loved all of those ideas. Like I should totally get my kids involved. The other day yes. I got some thrifted fabric and I dyed it and they had so many questions. They were oh, like really? watching me stir it. They were like, mom, is it poison? Like, they just, they were like, what are you doing? Like, I was making this magical concoction and I should totally get them in on some experimentation because I, I think that both my kids and my husband, they, there's definitely some perfectionist tendencies going on. And I think that <laughs> this is the kind of project where like, there is no perfect. So like they could, you know, kind of, it's a good entry point for kind of being creative without as many rules. So mm-hmm. I I totally need to get them. I'll have a little a little system in my backyard and they'll just be making all my custom fabric for me now. This yeah. Be terrific. Can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Amanda's gonna make a sweatshop. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I, I need some artsy fabrics. So <laughs> there, you, there you go, kids. Yeah. <laughs> um Okay, I know I just said that there is no wrong when it comes to fabric manipulation um, and experimentation, but I'm sure everyone has experienced something of a fail. Um, how do you guys handle it when you when you have a fabric manipulation fail? Do you just make lemons out of lemonade and make it work? Because I feel like, Meg, that would probably be your answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, I don't know if I've ever had any major fails. Um, I can't I can't think of anything really jumping out at me. I think it would probably be scrap it or try to find a way to, you know, like if I was dying, bleach it out and try again or. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. That was a useless answer. I'm sorry. Bianca, how <laughs> about you? What do you do? <laughs> OK, we are. We tend to have high achieving perfectionistic people in my house. (laughs) (laughs) So um, I have gotten to the point where I embrace failure. Mm -hmm. um, And I think it's been so useful to, to, if I like, so if I have a failure that only I know is a failure, I take it to my husband and my kids and I say hey what do you guys think of this without giving them any information on why it's good or bad and I let them give me their perspective on it um and we've we've talked extensively about honesty with love and so Mm. if you absolutely hate something tell me why it's wrong but be compassionate and mm-hmm. so I feel like if I take them in something that I think is hideous and ugly and <laughs> they agree, <laughs> they'll tell me and I know, okay, we need to rework this. But sometimes I take something in and my perspective is skewed because of my expectations, the time mm, I yeah. put into it, the resources. And so I don't have a, a clear lens. And by showing my perceived imperfections or failures to other people and asking for an unbiased review has helped me one recognize, yeah, this is crap or <laughs> hey, <laughs> t- 
turn it this way, or that would be good as, or, you know, oh, this reminds me of. And so getting, you know, other people's perspectives really can help calm some of those failing feelings, Mm -hmm. um, but also shift my perspective. Um, But also because, like I said, we're high achievers, I think it's important for my kids to see me fail. Um, I think it's important for them to see that I tried and mama messed up and here's how Mm. I messed up or Mm. I messed up and I don't know how I messed up. Yeah. Um, You know, and um, so I, I, I think it's important just to acknowledge, embrace, rework, reimagine or trash something yeah. if it's not working um and then just really and truly evaluate why and you know I think that's been helpful um I have entered some sewing contests and I in one in, in particular so I entered my bias tape dress mm-hmm. um it's a two-piece that is made up of strips of bias tape that are appliqued to create the fabric of this outfit Wow. And it took me about two weeks of playing with fabric paint and cutting the bias strips and then, uh, you know, applying it and everything. And I love the dress. And I entered it in, oh, two contests at two different times. And in one contest, it didn't even place. They did not even consider it. And the other was Threads Magazine, and it won the Threads Magazine Sewing Challenge that year. And so, you know, the first time was a failure, and the second time, it wasn't. And I think part of why I submitted was because my daughter asked. She said she saw the the notice on my email. She was like, what's that? I was like, oh, it's the Threads Magazine Challenge. And she's like, oh, you should enter this dress. And I'm like, yeah, I remember when I entered it in that contest, it didn't win. She's like, yeah, these are different people. <laughs> smart kid. Yeah, seriously. Yes. So smart. Yes. And so what looked like a failure ended up being a really big success. Um, and it was a, a lesson because we were able to talk about subjectivity. We were able to talk about potential biases. There was, there's a whole lot of stuff to talk about. You know, failure is not an isolated thing. There are a lot of mm-hmm. things that go into it. And I think we need to be able to piece it apart so we can learn and grow and not carry the the stink of failure on, you know? <laughs> I think there's just some, you just need to learn from it and figure yeah. out how to process and move yeah. on. That's yeah. such a good perspective mm-hmm. on failure. That's yeah. I I want to like read that every time I, I know, like seriously. think I failed something. <laughs> it's just a it's just a matter of perspective. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And if you really do believe and love something, yeah, it's you got to get it back out there again. Like that's a, such a great um, yeah thing to thing to know. Yeah. All right, you guys. Let's hop into a little bit of. Um, Discussion of dream projects. Ooh. What fabric technique would you use and what would you make if time and budget were not constraints? Mm, I'll start. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I would make, but it would probably be long and sweeping and dramatic, you know, because I do like long, sweeping, dramatic things. Um, I'd like to learn. I'd like to work more with dye than I like right now I'm okay at dyeing something a solid color or almost a solid color usually with some slight variation which is fine I I accept that but I'd like to I'd like to look at some making some more patterns and partial dyeing ice dyeing is a really cool mm-hmm. technique the shiori mm-hmm. dyeing um that sort of thing I'd like to I'd like to learn a little bit more about that and um Probably I think I'd have to learn how to draw in my own instincts because so, you know, back in, I want to say 11th grade, we had a tie dyeing uh, project in our um, chemistry class. I have no idea. I really I really have no idea, but that's what it was. And (laughs) um, and my T-shirt, I used all of the colors because I love all of the colors and Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's not hideous. It's really not. Um, But it's. It's also kind of 
dark and there's a lot of kind of wine color in there. And I think that that's part of my problem is I, I want to always add a little bit more color, a little bit, a little bit of another color, something like that. So I think I need to learn to, you know, stop and think maybe I just do want to do indigo and white, or maybe I do want to do just black and white and, and kind of learn to, uh, kind of learn to embrace, um, less is better as a mm. technique. Um, so yes, that's, that's kind of where I would like to go if I had all of the time and, and the motivation, which is actually my problem right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. When you were talking, I was literally like, oh, I wonder if you can tie dye with neutrals. I should try it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Oh my oh. gosh. Like hadn't even occurred to me. Oh yeah. That would be so pretty. I know. Like a, so subtle, right? <laughs> so subtle. Like it gets a lot of grays and oh, mixed yeah. with cook guys. <laughs> all the all the Some, muddy tones. I love all it. the muddy tone. Yeah, it's like you could just take like a piece of white and just go into the forest and just like rub it around in them and like different. No, I don't know. Brilliant. That's distressing. Not yeah. dying. <laughs> no, but like the mud, like yeah, you could mud yeah. dye thing. Well, and that's, like, that's true. Like, yeah, Bar. that's true. That's what the red de- red dirt shirts are. Oh. After all. So we know Amanda's bringing on her next hike. It's just like a piece of white fabric. Some white, white fabric. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Wood wood tie dye. Yeah. Yes. It's a new it's a new technique. I love oh. it. How about you, Meg? Oh, um, well, I actually thought this. Uh, I didn't think that I would be answering this question. I thought it would just be for Bianca, but I'm really excited about what she's going to say. So I just, something just popped into my head. If Since I would have no budget, no time, anything constraints, I would try my hand at like shoemaking and make like a lime green leather woven clog with like some what? paint. Like, and I would like paint, like, I don't know. I would try and make a shoe because like I, if like a garment with fat, like I don't know if that would, that could be quick for me but i would like to do a a clog some sort of thing with like the leather being yeah braided or wo- like just something crazy with the like lime green neon like leather strips or something so that would be mine <laughs> i mean you know how i feel about clogs i know amanda got me on clogs and then she <laughs> sent me this website that literally had highlighter green clog like and i was just i'm st- it's like bookmarked, so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bianca, what what is your dream project? Oh, my dream project. I was on my way before the pandemic. Mm. Um, I was using a, a community laser mm. for my pattern weights and um, just playing oh. around with with um, cutting fabric and making kits and all kinds of stuff. Um, but now I don't have access to it. Mm. So uh. I, I have seriously been, been considering buying a laser <laughs> um, for <laughs> wow. home because I really, yeah. so right before I started doing um, etching on fabric mm. oh. and you, so you take your, you uh, upload your image into the laser software and the laser gently scrapes away the top surface of your fabric. Oh my gosh. You have to play with your settings so it doesn't burn and just ignite in the machine. So it doesn't but, go all the way through, um, just the top? It doesn't, yes. Oh, so imagine interesting. Moving. Yes, I have some uh, champagne colored velvet <gasps> and I put my image in and it just, you know, so when you look at velvet, you see the nap, but yeah. this breaks the top off of the nap. <gasps> So you have this impression in the fabric, and it is gorgeous. I, and I did the same design on denim. I'll I'll upload them um, to my feed when this goes live, so people can go have a look. Yes, um, yes, I want to see. Oh, so I really um, you know, if time were not an issue, because I would be etching fabric all day long, and money wasn't an issue, I would probably. Um, invest in a, a home laser and mainly because the type I want will require cutting a hole in the wall for it to exhaust properly mm. um, and so that's my only hesitation it's like we just did this reno do I want to cut another hole in a wall <laughs> 
What's one more hole in the wall? <laughs> well, it's, it's for your art. It's for your yes. art. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, man. It is so funny because I feel like my my dream project would be like still pretty simple. But um, I've been seeing a lot of I kind of love painterly prints and I've um, been seeing some folks create kind of large scale mm. brushstroke type um, prints and they're just stunning. Um, but maybe that's when I can get my kids to help with. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was super fun, you guys. I am yes. totally inspired in uh-huh. life and in sewing. <laughs> um, let's take a quick break and then we'll we'll hop back in with a fun little exercise. Mm-hmm. So now that we are all inspired by fabric manipulation and have projects running through our heads, let's play a little game of what would you make with the help of our fish bowls, of course. Yes. <laughs> yes. So. In one, we have various fabric treatments. And then in the other, we have the type of fabric. And I brought in a third bowl this time with the color or print. So we're going to pick out, like, there's like 10 in each bowl or so. So lots of like, random um, colors and techniques and fabrics. And so I'm going to pull out one from each bowl. And then you have to say what you would make with it. Like, it could be a bag or home, like, just depending on, you know, how you put it all together and it would be yeah it could be something that you would wear like to your you know or just let's just see where this goes so who wants to go first amanda what are you i'm just picking you so we'll okay i'll we'll do show, it we'll, we'll show <laughs> bianca how it's done <laughs> oh gosh oh gosh <laughs> all right so number one so this is the fabric manipulation okay smocked okay okay fabric that you need to smock is chiffon. Yeah. <laughs> and then thick. It needs to be violet floral. So that something actually sounds kind of beautiful. I know. I was like, sometimes they yeah, I think I have something that smokes chiffon. Yeah. Violet floral. Those things all go together. So yeah. as long as I don't actually have to make it. Um, yeah, you don't have to make it. What would what would you what what thing would you make? Like, um, I definitely think like some kind of romantic gown with like oh, fitted yeah. bust, big sleeves, ruffles. So something that I would never personally wear. Yeah. But mm-hmm. um but something that I so yeah I can't think of a specific. Um, so it'd be like a long ma- flowing maxi dress. Yeah, with, where- with yeah, with like a little bit of a maybe a peasant vibe, um, little boho, but fitted bodice, flowy skirt, ruffles. And the smocking would be where? Like, I think um, like in like the, in the bodice in the like the top. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, like that actually sounds Bodice, maybe so even cute. like top of the sleeves. Ooh, I could see, you know, create yeah. a little gather and then it, mm-hmm. um, and then the sleeve hoofs out from there. You should feel free to make that for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah that sounds like Kate <laughs> would definitely wear that. Oh, yes. I would swan all over the place in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect for swanning in my head. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Who wants to go next? How oh, Bianca? You go. Okay. Uh, okay. So. All right, so okay, sides are confused. Okay, so we have whoa, three D like applique tiered shapes. <laughs> wow, like so a three D applique with in denim. Oh, okay. well, at least the denim can. Oh my gosh, that. this is this is yeah. so you, Bianca. Yeah, like and then it is. It's going to be mint green camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, except for that. <laughs> what would you make out of the, that fabric? Okay. Um, am I allowed to cut my appliques from the fabric first? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Because if, okay. So if I have the fabric, I, if you were to ask me what fabric I am not a fan of, I would say camo is number one. (laughs) The bowls always know. The bowls know. (laughs) So here's, (laughs) so I would, okay, and again, this is just fantasy stuff. So I would cut my 3D applique shapes, which in my head would probably be flowers. Oh, yes. I would 
some petals. I would align the flowers along particular colors so it ends up being solids but in different colors so with camo in my head this camo is mint green yeah. with a little black yes maybe a little brown mm-hmm. okay yeah. and so I would have a, all of my mint flowers would be one shape all of my brown would be another wow and so I would then make it with like a summer maxi dress Ooh. and the top would have a few of the mint scattered across the top. I'd use a solid base and then have it like trickle from the shoulder across the bottom. <gasps> and then the appliques would just increase in That's density like to the floor. Couture. Like, I know. I was thinking like Mind blown. crazy, like Overalls. camo, like cargo <laughs> pants with like, <laughs> like d- dragon scale, like appliques from the pocket. Oh my gosh, you're sound gorgeous. Yes. That's why you're the totally expert does. on this. Totally. <laughs> you can turn like. like- that's such a nice, like, feminine take on camo, yes. too. Like, oh, you're so, so creative. Oh, that's gorgeous. I think that has to be a project. We'll I talk later. <laughs> yeah. Let as long as we don't actually have to use camo. You have right, to use camo. Ready? <laughs> do I have to follow oh, yeah. that? Yes, you do. But I feel like she's so creative that she's even like disguising the camo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Kate. Let's see what you got. Pin tucked. So pin tucks. Pin tucks. Uh, in LeMay. <gasps> <laughs> That's yellow zebra striped. <laughs> yellow zebra striped LeMay that has pin tucks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, by the way, my least favorite fabric to sew is lame. <laughs> See <laughs> the I bowl. Don't have to sew no, I did. I didn't bowls even want, like bowls. No. Um, all right. So, I think what I would do is I would make sort of a bomber jacket. Oh, that would actually Fun. be so cute. And I'd take a coordinating um, yellow or I don't know possibly white or black, whatever the other zebra stripe is. Um, and I would um, and I would make a yoke for it. Oh, And cute. then that's where the pin tucks would go. I would On not try yoke. to pin tuck the lame. Um, and then maybe I could do some, like, little pocket flaps with the contrasting color, maybe some cuffs. And, you know, so it's a lot of lame, but it's got some nice trim and a solid and some cool pin tucks across the yoke. I think a jacket was, I didn't even, that's the perfect application for that. Mm-hmm. I would, I would actually wear that yes. jacket. <laughs> yeah. I sure would. <laughs> it's like, quick, what would Meg wear? <laughs> yeah, because you I, get the shiny, like, moto, like, ja- oh, yeah. Yeah. Cute. All right. Okay, I'm going to do, I'm not even looking. You doing one for yourself? I'm doing one for myself now. Okay. I'm not looking. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull out. Oh, like sh- el- el- elastic shearing. In oh, this one went in the wrong bowl. That, that it said ruched, but that's okay. so elastic shearing in corduroy. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Ooh. Okay. Oh, flamingo pink. Oh my gosh. The that bowls. is so funny because I, from Matchpoint uh, Fabric, I just bought flamingo print corduroy. I actually have. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they know. They oh, know. This is actually getting like spooky. <laughs> <laughs> like I was shuffling that and I was being super. Wow. Okay. So, and this actually could become reality because I have the fabric. I would do like a paper bag, like high waist mm-hmm. pants with the shearing, like, and I may do even like the cuffs too or something. Oh, but yeah. cute, like that would be cute, like just in the just and so it would come up the top. Yeah, so that's what I would do, and like I actually might do that because <laughs> that's because then I wouldn't have to sew like a zipper or like a weight. Totally. I just cinch them in. I know I do need to do more like elastic shearing it's actually not that hard you no. always it seems a lot intimidating you just zigs over like 
elastic cord and pull it. I think I'm going to, yeah, do that. That was fun. That was so fun. Yeah. Except I'm going to do another round or are we just done? We can do one more round if we would like because I have enough if we would like. Should we do one? What do you guys think? Uh, Like a lightning round. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, we'll just do like quick, quick, quick. Okay. So Amanda first again. Okay, quick. All right. Let's get our read of hats on. Okay, no, I put it back in the bowl in the first one, so it's ruched. <laughs> but I did shuffle them, too. Okay, so ruching. Okay, and then the type of fabric. Oh, the color is silver. Oh, and then I got, okay. And then, I don't know how these got in mixed up bowls, but now I'll do. Oh, okay, so ruched. Silver satin. So it's silver, it's made of satin, and it has to have ruching. Um, I don't know. Maybe a pillow? <laughs> oh, that would actually be cute. I think it'd like, be pretty. Classic. Yeah. All right, that's my answer. Okay. It's boring, but... I'd see, that's hilarious, because I was like, well, that's a prom dress right there. Oh, that's yeah. a prom dress right there. <laughs> Amanda says pillow. <laughs> I'm done with that journey. <laughs> okay. Bianca, you have... I don't know, you've got a little girl. That's oh, true. a potato block printing. <gasps> I wanted the potato. I, <laughs> Amanda, wanted the potato. Okay, so potato block printing on spandex. Whoa. And the spandex is red. Okay, red spandex potato stamping. (laughs) I am going to make a gymnastics leotard. Yes. And I'm going to stamp stars and confetti type of (gasps) splashes. Like an um, 80s vibe. Yeah. Yes. Totally yes. 80s. Mary Lou Retton, Flojo. Mm-hmm. I want outfit that. Outfit type of thing. Something, you know, over the top fun with hand carved stamps. Yep. Oh, uh, I want that. That sounds amazing. Perfect. Perfect. I kind of want all of these things that we've said. <laughs> okay. Um, Kate. <laughs> Yeah, screen printing. So screen print. Screen printing. Linen. So screen printed linen. Amanda's like looking so sad now because she didn't get to do this one. (laughs) In orange stripes. In orange stripes. Oh, okay. So what I think I would do was I would probably make a... Mm, either a, a knee length dress or like a tunic length top, something like that. Um, and I would, let's see, I would screen print flowers on it. Um, yeah, that would be cute. Yes. And they would be like raspberry pink mm, um, mm-hmm. over and, and then they'd have the, the leaves with them too. So they'd be kind of like these little bunches of flowers that would kind of cover over the stripes, not like hide the stripes, but kind of yeah. work with them. Yes, that's what I would do. Well, that's pretty. Cute. Yeah, because I I figure like the orange stripe, it's like a cream, like orange and like white stripe. Mm-hmm. With, like, yeah, a that's raspberry. what I was picturing. That would be super cute. Oh, that's so cute. I know, it would be right. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Last one for me. All right, we have, ooh, tie-dye. Ooh, okay. Tie-dyed seersucker. Oh, interesting. In brown. (laughs) Amanda, do you want a new shirt? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I love all those things together. That's kind of hilarious. Oh, yeah. I would just make like a clap, like... But an oversized, like, but like a shirt dress, maybe even like a really like a seersucker, like summery shirt dress with like brown and ba- like basically mud, like <laughs> mud colors. You have or to like, come out to the forest I, with me. <laughs> I know. Well, if the fabric was like brown, like, I'd have to use I'd have to use some bleach, I guess, in the in the tie dye. Then, right? If I wanted to lighten some spots. Hmm. Well, maybe it was a light brown. It was a, maybe yeah, it's a light brown, and then I add more, yeah. Or we'll maybe see. the tie dye is brown, and you started with cream Whites. fabric or yeah. white. Oh yes, yeah. 
So basically, Amanda's new shirt. With yeah. A little <laughs> loose, it on. loose shirt dress. <laughs> love it. Oh, that was fun. Okay, oh. awesome. I love doing stuff like that. You just never know. All right, that was awesome, and I love our various ideas. So now let's jump into our Sojo section. For anyone who doesn't know, um, Sojo is what's giving us our sewing mojo at the moment. And I won't make Bianca jump in first. So Amanda, you go first. Well, I am still on my jumpsuit kick. It's <gasps> like jumpsuit a palooza over here. All I want to make is jumpsuits. And I am so late. To this train, but I'm here <laughs> and I could not think of like a better example of something that welcome aboard. <laughs> I know, I know something you said you hated, you would never do, you didn't understand going to the bathroom was difficult, like all the things. I was such a jumpsuit <laughs> hater and now I'm just only making jumpsuits. And I feel like probably I should, you know, there's a good life lesson there. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of fun sweet awesome all right now i'm gonna call him bianca how about you okay i am excited to be working with liberty patterns i oh, have not fun. sewn yes i've not sewn a liberty pattern before and i have the there's a pantsuit pattern by them that i'm gonna work on and the beatrix dress and what makes those projects super exciting is I get to use Liberty Fabric to do it. Whoa. So I am, yes, I am really excited to clear my cutting table so I can finally dive into those projects. Well, that's really cool. Yes. What a neat opportunity. Heck yes. Yeah. All right. How about you, Meg? What's your sojo? Well, now I'm in cottage mode, so my cottage <laughs> capsule. Well, within <laughs> that, I was going to do this anyway. I'm working on um, a post about I really need more, like, casual skirts. Like, sometimes I don't want to wear pants or a dress. I just need, like, a basic – like, every skirt I have is so dressy. I just, So mm -hmm. I'm taking kind of three similar silhouette, like, style casual skirts. I'm making the – the Don, uh, Helen's calls it Donovan skirt, the Lonnie skirt, and then a Berta skirt, all similar. And I'm going to make them all in just different colors of linen and kind of do a kind of um, a back to back kind of roundup review about, you know, similar styles and what, you know, what I like about them. And so I'll have three skirts by the end. So I'm, I'm excited because I need them. I have no casual skirts and it's, I'm just wearing now the same like white cotton like, nighty every day. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't go out in it, so I need, like, something that's breezy, but I can still go outside in. <laughs> Does anyone else make their clothing decisions in the morning about, based on how likely they are to leave the house? Oh, 100%. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I need to take off my pajama bottoms? Yeah. No. No. I don't, I'll just make fashion pajamas that I can still leave the house in. <laughs> uh, yes, well, that's you. Yeah. How about you, um, Kate? What's your sojo? You know, um, I'm I'm feeling a little slumpy right now. Um, I just I still kind of working on finishing up my cosplay. Mm. Um, not anything fabric wise, just like doing some last minute painting and stuff like that. So um, I haven't really had time to do any sewing, but I've still got my pile of linen. So my next project is going to invi involve a pile of linen, which I did take out of the box for the record. Oh, yeah. Cause was last... it lovely? It yeah. is lovely. Oh. I, we, yeah. Last time you had received oh. a box of linen. And how long did you wait before you opened it? Um, I waited, I don't know, like, it's actually almost a week. Oh, <gasps> Six days. Wow. Can you, well, I had to finish that cosplay. I had could to get you, I had yeah. to get Concrunch filmed before I could do that. Could you ever do that, Bianca? I, Amanda and I were like, we could never. You get a new shipment of fabric, but you don't open the package. I really can't do it. I'm yeah, <laughs> me husband, I think yeah. He, I've managed to do it for like an hour. And yeah, then an hour exactly. Just say, Come on. <laughs> I know yeah, you want to open it. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I couldn't oh. tempt myself. I had another project I had to finish, oh, and so wow. I had to not see it because if I saw it, then I would have a problem. And then, of course, I was so exhausted from um, doing all the con crunch stuff that I haven't had any energy to do anything with it. But I'm going to get there. Nice. So, so fun. It's waiting for you. <laughs> yeah. It's waiting. When you're ready. 
Yeah, I have to take it out and pin it to my dress form as motivation oh. to finish everything else. So I look like I have the liberty now and it's just saying, hurry up, get hurry to me. <laughs> you know, that's that would a good, do it. That's a good yeah. technique. I should try that. If I had a dress form, though. I know. <laughs> oh, that's definitely the next thing I need to get for my studio. For sure. Dress form. We can make it. I know. I have thought I'm, about it. Yeah, I'm curious. Definitely. You know, I actually have a confession. When we were getting ready for the for the cosplay thing, my husband did make a, a duct tape dress form of me. He did? He Fun. did. Did it he work? He did not put quite enough duct, duct tape on it, and so the steam started kind of popping out. Oh. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's horrifying because you, <laughs> looking at your own body in 3D like that is really like mentally problematic sometimes. Mm, but sorry. I mean, I'm pretty sure it looks pretty much like me. Yeah. But just think it'll be result in like really great, gar- you know, for checking fitting and dra- like draping. Mm-hmm. It's like the benefits are just. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're wonderful. I'm not sure. If he- I- I have a PDF pattern where I explain how to make your body double. <gasps> and I did it after I had my son because I couldn't connect. My brain couldn't connect with yeah. my new body. Mm. Oh. And yeah. it was so it was so grounding to wow. be able to look at it. And I, uh, my son's eight, and I still have that same dress form. It's completely pinnable. It's on a stand. What? It can be hung. It is... Like my best friend, because I, you know, if I have doubts about fit, I just stick it in her and she just makes it all make sense for me. Where can I get that PDF? (laughs) Is there anywhere where I can? (laughs) Yeah, it's in my Etsy store. It's five. Oh, I will. Yeah, we linked. I will. I am going to go buy that. uh, Yeah. Can we, if we can, in the show notes, we're going to link to everything. And I think. We're going to have a lot of listeners that want, I know I'm definitely going to buy that because. Yes. It is work though. Know that it is. Yes. It is work, but it is worth the work. I have had mine eight years, like I've said, and it has not degraded at all. Um, It has a removable cover in the unlikely to simmer down. (laughs) But (laughs) But you have that option. (laughs) Yeah, I have that option, but also you can add back. If you need to bulk her up, so so it is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check this out because I have to be honest. I don't think my husband stuffed the duct tape form very well because I know I'm a bit lopsided, but I don't think I'm that lopsided. (laughs) (laughs) I think I'm just gonna like pay because my husband he like builds stuff, and so I think that's a project for him. I can just get him to do that. I think if there's like if there's sewing components too, I could do. But I am going to do that for sure. The only thing I worry about is we have no walls in our like law, like it's like a studio bedroom all open and I'm going to spook myself in the middle of the night getting up and <laughs> totally. I see a figure in the corner. <laughs> that's I've my only, <laughs> that's my only, thing. I'll just hide yeah. it. I'll, I'll hide her away from the night so she doesn't scare me. <laughs> just drape a blanket over her. Something. I think that's more scary. That's more oh, okay. scary. Lay her down. That's a ghost. <laughs> wow. Well, lay her on the ground. Yeah. There just lay her on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just put it in. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Julian. Sorry, you have the couch now. Uh, my my dress form gets to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't snore as bad as you do. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Julian. All right. Well, that was that was a, a fun uh, detour. I, that was yeah. uh, a great detour. <laughs> For sure, but I'm going to drag us kicking and screaming back to our oh, usual know, schedule. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> um, all right, so our last thing is our so and tell. Um, so last week we asked you, or last time we asked you, what's your favorite thing that you've refashioned? And we got some cool answers on Instagram, and we're going to read some of those. Amanda, want to start us off? I will, I will. We heard from at so Melwick. Um, who said, I made a much loved old dress into a cap sleeve top recently, and I love it. But my favorite refashioned upcycled make is usually my latest one. I sew a lot with sheets <gasps> and linens. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely, whatever I just made is my favorite thing. Yeah. I love it. Cool. 
All right. We also heard from at Yoga on Point, who said, I made a drapery panel into a cute bolero jacket for my daughter-in-law. I guess my favorite was years ago, though. I brought a box full of women's XXL floral t-shirts and made tops and skirts for little girls in a church group. It was great. and We all looked cute in our outings. I love that story. Oh, I love that. I love both of those. I love the bolero and I love the girls in the little t-shirt dresses. Mm -hmm. Mm And then we had at uh, Stephanie Nicole. they said, I made a cardigan for me that was just totally the wrong color. I hate that I love mustard yellow so much when it clashes with my skin tone. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So after three years of having it in the closet without getting warm, I repurposed it into a romper for my nephew. That's sweet. It's I know, I love mustard repurpose. colored. I'm just so thankful that it goes with my red hair so well because I love a mus- mustard yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's hard loving those, like, crazy tonal colors. I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. And, of course, this week we're going to ask you what fabric manipulation technique are you excited to learn more about because, well, I mean... Why wouldn't you want to talk about that? So you can email it to us or leave it on our show notes or um, tell us on Instagram. We'd love to hear your answer. Mm -hmm. And Bianca, where can our listeners find and follow you? I am at thanks. I made them on Instagram and thanks. I made them.blogspot.com. Mm. Well, we thank you yes, for being on the so podcast much. today and <laughs> making so all fun. This. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it was thank so you. neat to have you on. Oh, I know. I'm I so love, inspired. Love having a different perspective and all those amazing, all that amazing fabric manipulation inspiration. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I did. Good to see what you guys make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take care, everyone. Happy stitching. Happy stitching. Happy stitching. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at goldenpeakmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the sewandtell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Our consulting producer is Ron Doyle, and our executive producer is Jared Mayer. 